Hi, I'm Kaushal Sadawarte. Hello, I'm Ishan Mahindar. Hi, I'm Saloni Nimgaukar and we are team Overthinkers from Vishwakarma Institute of Technology, Pune. Can you see my screen? Yeah. So uh, we would like to start by taking an overview of the project using the dashboard. Our task was to build a data app using the Ikigai Labs to estimate the salary. Uh, we were provided with three data sets, training, testing, and validation. Ikigai Labs is a no-code data science platform which is used in this project. As artificial intelligence and data science engineers, it was a unique experience for us to solve a data science problem using minimal coding. So we followed these uh, conventional steps while approaching the project. First, we started with data cleaning, then data analysis, and then model fitting and evaluation, and then text testing. The data was quite haphazard and contained a lot of unique text values as well as uh, null and minus one values. A data set uh, which has multiple data types such as textual, uh, numeric, uh, categorical, time, etc. needs to be manipulated very carefully. So we first cleaned the entire training data using the facets provided by the Ikigai. They are mentioned in the dashboard as well. Yeah, so uh, this is what the data looks like after uh, cleaning. Then we converted all of the textual data to categorical and then label encoded it further into the numeric format. So we did this using the code facet by importing the sklearn library. Um, this enables us to apply further models as it will be explained later. Let's take a look at what is provided to us. In the given, in the given data sets, the training set consisted of 15 columns. Out of this, we can observe that the column competitors has over 50% null values. Let's take a look at it. This is a peak function from Ikigai Labs, which is which was very useful throughout in the process. So as you can see in the competitors, there are a lot of minus one or null values, and this, this didn't really have any relevance to the data set. Accordingly, there was also a column called as job description, which basically had a description for each and every different uh, row or the job. And thus it was also rendered useless. So we dropped both of the columns. There are 1,764 rows in this column. Uh, now we move on to filling the missing data in columns. The most challenging part of this was to convert rating and founded because these are both numbers and uh, minus one is also obviously a number. So it is not treated as a null value for either rating or founded. We first had to convert it into a textual value and then convert it back to a number. Uh, we actually calculated the average values for both rating and founded. They came out to be 3.9 and 1920 after taking into consideration the null values. These were then replaced uh, at all the places of minus one. Uh, the next columns are size, type of ownership, industry, sector, revenue. These are textual columns. And on further observation, we realized that these are not unique texts, but actually they are uh, they reoccur in the data set. And thus we had to convert them into categories. We further missed, uh, fill, fill the missing values using F fill and B fill functions, which uh, respectively convert the, which is fully fill the data with the previous and uh, or the next most occurring value in the data set. Next, next thing that we did was uh, that we manipulated the salary column. The salary estimate column had a lot of different stuff like uh, the pretext to the salary, then the dollar symbol, the K symbol, and text after the salary as well. So we had to remove all of this individually and then uh, we, we got a new data that is T-cell split. As you can see in the speak function, what is being exported. Estimate one and salary estimate two. This was further removed as the glass door estimate is further removed. We can see it later. The next step that we did in cleaning was to further convert the categories. As we saw, there was a slight problem while exporting from this part and all the text, all the categorical variables that we were converted had been, uh, had been again converted to, had been again converted to text as you can see here. So we had to again re reconvert it into categorical variables in which we have obviously converted it back again. Then the then label encoding issues and uh, Ishan will explain further. Yeah. So in order to process uh, categorical variables and have to make predictions on them, uh, the textual data cannot be handled by the machine learning models. So in order to predict, we need to convert them into a numerical format. So there are two types of encoding, one hot encoding and label encoding. So for this, we have chosen a label encoding as the way to do it. And yeah, so we basically um, use the scikit-learn scikit library and the label encoder they have provided to label encoder data. It basically counts the total number of categories available in the column and then assigns the value between the range. Uh, yeah, now you can see. Yeah, so as you can see here, each of the columns that are categorical in nature have been converted using the fit transform function, the label encoder. And so yeah, we get a numerical output. 
that are now going to prediction actual training the data model on the data and then our prediction so for the model training we first plot a correlation matrix uh, using the correlation matrix we can predict how uh, how the input features are correlated to each other and what relation they have but after uh, after drawing the correlation matrix we realize that neither of these attributes have a correlation of greater than 0.03 that's a very meager uh, correlation and the only attribute that was related to minimum salary was maximum salary itself which is not an input feature so these features they have provided are not uh, correlated at all and cannot be used to make a uh, what can we say a very good prediction reliable prediction reliable prediction so we still try to predict uh, using the predict functions provided in the ikiga itself so here we train some models like knn k nearest neighbors decision trees and linear models so the accuracy again show the accuracy is yes. coming as 93% uh, but this is due to the maximum salary is also being considered here as an input so that's why uh, and we so we used python and in that we trained on a bunch of models like ranging from uh, decision tree tree based models like svr that is support vector regression decision trees and random forest regressor these tree based models were first chosen because they were really great with categorical data but they also didn't uh, work give satisfactory output to our problem so we also moved on to another different types of models such as neural network models so deep learning was used and a uh, model of at least three hidden layers was also used for this purpose but it still didn't give the desired output so at the end we finally decided on a linear uh, linear regression model because that gave the most satisfactory output out what can we say of all, all the models so can we go to the validation function so uh, we have been provided with training testing and validation set so the training has been used for training the model the testing has been just to test the model and the validation is the main thing we get to know the accuracy and all the other features of the model so for this uh, we rename the columns according to the facet facet and the facet has been already provided to us by uh, the custom facet and which calculates the validation uh, validation index of that so and the output is exported in the validation data set so can you show the data set so this is the output of the validation custom so we, which we have uh, run just a while ago so, this is, output. so this is different way two output variables and the MSA is mean standard error, RMA is, is, is root mean standard error, MA is another matrix are used and R square is obviously to show how well the model fits the data and as you can see the value is negative and below uh, below minus one as well so it doesn't actually fit the data very good at all so yeah that's all from us. The one thing that we would like to point out is that uh, for the training data set which was 1064 rows we split it into a training and testing split as 0.7 and then we got an ac a satisfactory accuracy of 75%. But then that was probably the only thing which was which we could obtain without considering uh, either of the salary components as a part of the uh, selected columns. It is really unfair to select either of the columns because uh, when we are to predict something on a model, then they are uh, we would not expect maximum or minimum salary, either of them to be given really. So that on the basis of which we can judge the minimum or maximum salary. So based on the given columns that we had, I think the best that we could do was 75%. So that's all yeah. from our side.